Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Grave Reviews. My name's Chris, and tonight I've checked out the new horror movie, Cobweb, which is directed by one Samuel Bodden, and this is his feature debut. This movie has a bit of a uh, production behind it as uh, Evan Goldberg and Seth Rogen are both producers on this thing. It stars Lizzie Kaplan, Anthony Starr, Cleopatra Coleman, and Woody Norman. I heard good things about this movie. I was excited to check this out. Not the biggest fan. I don't know if it's controversial. I didn't really like this movie. I was very disappointed, honestly. Uh, I'm probably gonna end up spoiling some things, so just right off the bat, I'll say this about it. I think the production quality speaks for itself. It's great. The cinematography, fantastic. Um, the music's really good. It looks great. There's some cool scare sequences. It's kind of very dark at times. Maybe it's my glaucoma flaring up or something, but I had a trouble seeing things occasionally. Um, there's some fun acting, especially from Lizzie Kaplan. Anthony Starr, Homelander from The Boys. He plays uh, Homelander from The Boys in this, but he doesn't have any superhero powers and his hair is darker. Kind of fits, though, for his character, so whatever. It's good casting, I guess, in that way. Um, no real issues with Woody Norman, who's the young boy. Uh, I usually don't like a movie that is kind of just the the central main protagonist is a young child, simply because I don't relate to a young child anymore. Like, children in movies as plot points and stuff I can relate to having children, but, like, I don't see the world from a child's point of view very often anymore. And so I just couldn't really usually relate to them as a protagonist, but he did a fine job in this movie. Now, that being said, if you're coming into this movie looking for something that's silly and dumb and kind of fun at times, the end of the movie, well, not the end, but the last the act gives you that. There's some fun scare sequences throughout. If you're coming to a movie because you want a good storyline that makes sense, and, uh, period... It's not this movie. The storyline's hot fucking garbage. I'm sorry, but this is the problem I have, <clears throat> and I'm gonna be way more harsh on this than lower budget movies, because I, I review a lot of low budget movies, and I'm pretty lenient with them, because they don't have the backing of, of uh, you know, the resources. They don't have the cameras, the crew, the time uh, to make something that has the sheen and the polish. This movie clearly did, seeing who's attached to it. I don't know what the budget was, but I'm guessing it was a couple million dollars. And it shows, insofar as the camera work is, is fantastic. The scares are well constructed, and the makeup and the effects work and everything is really good. The lighting, dark but good and moody. <clears throat> but if you take away any of the sheen from this movie, what you're left with is an incredibly dumb story with a million plot holes. And so that's where my disappointment lies. This happens a lot with movies that have a decent resources. Instead of taking time on a really well-written script that tries to cover all these things, they just go with something that will hit, fill the need to have jump scares and creepy moments. Because I guess maybe I'm in the minority. There's an audience out there, and maybe the majority of the audience out there, who doesn't care as long as the creepy lady's creepy face shows up and she does creepy things. Otherwise, they don't care about the vessel that is gets them to those points, if that makes sense. Uh, but for me, you could just pick this movie apart almost from the jump. And you know what? I realized I never even said what the plot of this movie is. So this movie is about Peter, a young eight-year-old boy who lives in his house with his mom and dad, and he starts hearing voices in the walls. When he goes to school, he gets bullied. And then it starts to unravel that the parents aren't exactly who they seem to be. There's more to the mystery. There may or may not be a creature lady thing living in the walls. There's a creature lady living in the walls. I don't know when this wall thing started. I feel like it started years ago where all of a sudden people are just living inside walls. That's so... How many houses have walls that you could live inside of? That's fucking stupid. But whatever, let's let that part go. There's just so much to this premise where, and this is going to be spoilery now, so I warned you, that <clears throat> the parents essentially committed murder to a young girl, 
have hidden the fact that they had another child, all this stuff getting away with it, okay? They have this mutant daughter, creature, woman living in their basement that they've been feeding for years, who somehow has the incredible ability to climb up the walls, uh, pull, you know, fully bodied people around like they're rag dolls, decapitate people, all this stuff, but somehow cannot manage to escape from the basement. Uh, even though she desperately tries, all the while she's been speaks like a child to her brother through the walls, tries to convince him to t stand up for himself with these bullies and all this shit, but in reality doesn't really care about him, so I don't know why she does any of that. It feels so contrived, and I think my main problem with it is it's really campy, but it tries to be serious. It kind of reminds me of Malignant, but Malignant did the right thing, and it embraced its camp right from the jump, and it knew it was a silly movie. Sure, it has some dark things that happen in it, but that opening sequence, there's no denying that they knew they were making something very silly. It's time we cut out the cancer. And in this, it just feels like they're trying desperately to be serious the whole time. And the end with like leaving on this note about like something, something, trauma, blah, 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 fear will be with you. There's tons of threads that are opened. They have a teacher whose only purpose in this movie is to show up randomly at the house to check on the boy. But outside of that, she has no character. She's nothing. And she disappears for half the movie to randomly show up at the end. It's just everything feels like in the script, or like, well, we need this, we need this, we need this, we need this. But we don't have to justify any reasons why. So ultimately, I thought this was really disappointing. I, I don't... I don't know what I'm missing that everybody is uh, so good on this thing, but I guess if you enjoyed it, that's great. I'm gonna give it a 4 out of 10. I thought that uh, beyond its cool couple of cool scare sequences and its look and production values, it was kind of hot garbage, guys. Let me know in the comments what you thought of Cobweb, and then let me know what I should be watching, and I will catch you here next time. Thank you.